Santos. We have a, a Daniel Hernandez from Signus with its solution has valid. And we have a Dimitri Isakov, uh, he is from Russia, with uh, its solution fraud score. So they are going to tell us their experience in the program and they are going to tell us, tell us about uh, their solution. Maria Wicentek uh, was the winner of the last edition of Cybersecurity Ventures. <coughs> so Maria, now you are in the RSA, your company, RSA. your startups. <laughs> Your startup is in the RSA right now, so the internationalization is important for you. Uh, how does cybersecurity ventures help you in the internationalization of your startup? And what are you going to do? Uh, what, which are your next steps? Uh, for us, it was really important because when we go outside of Spain, it happens inside of Spain, so imagine outside, the people say, hey, who are you? Who are you? What are your references? Okay. Um, when we win the, or participate in the in cyber program, when we go out and to the different countries, we say, hey, we are one company from the cyber program, and it changes everything. Um, for, from South America and Mexico, for example, these kind of countries in cyber is a complete reference. They really want to be, they really want to have programs like you, all the programs that you said, okay, and to say, hey, we came from the cyber program. Is for us was really really cool. Now we have a lot of clients, so <laughs> great, great. Uh, next steps in internationalization, uh, USA. You say RSA? We try. We, we try. We try. We are in the <coughs> RSA nowadays. We are looking for partnership because we sell by channel, so we need partners around the different countries when we want to to grow. And nowadays we are growing in 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 the states. We are growing in Mexico. We are growing in Chile, and of course in Spain. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maria. And Daniel. Well, with Daniel, it's a special case because. He participated in, in Cyber Emprended Incubator and also he participated in the Accelerator. He had the second position in the Accelerator and the first position in the Incubation. So could you tell us, uh, give us uh, headlines about the difference of the programs, so what uh, they mean to you? Yeah. Do they mean to you? <coughs> so I, I was in, in the first uh, program in 2020, start of 2020, well, it ended in 2020, but it started in, in 2019, before COVID. So, uh, at this stage, our company was only an idea. We had uh, some part of the team with us, but uh, we tried to validate the idea that we had. And another important thing for us was to also to, to have the recognition in the market because uh, we needed to work with very big companies to manufacture the devices that we do. We, we, we do cybersecurity for, for blockchains. So, yeah, when, when, when you speak about uh, security, security is very difficult to assess. Uh, so recognition and reputation is very important. So this was the, the first stage. And second stage, the, then we, we went through the program of uh, cybersecurity vendors, and this was the way to, to scale the company, so to, to have the tools to scale the company after that. So I think it will more or less say... Great, great, uh, Daniel. And here we have a foreign startup located here in Madrid. And uh, Dimitri, why did you choose Spain and uh, what... Uh, Mm, what's the most important thing you get from cybersecurity ventures? What did, uh... <coughs> mm, since we are working, uh, Frostcore is a company working worldwide, so it's about online advertising. It's not attached to some specific country. So we, uh, for, many, uh, for some years, been working uh, with international clients, and we see that uh, uh, for some reasons uh, a lot of companies from marketing world are located in spain uh -huh. they have been uh, they came out of they were born in spain they have branches in spain they are targeted to the spanish uh, market uh, to latin american market to european market so uh, and a lot of events happening in spain like in barcelona mobile world congress affiliate summits and a lot of other events specifically in spain uh, so once we uh, were selected, we, we uh, became the winners of uh, Rising Startup Spain program in 2019. We decided, yeah, we should go, and we had a lot of help with uh, from 
uh, from I6 with uh, E6, I6, not sure how you call it. Uh, so uh, they helped out with lending, with establishing a branch and like that. And uh, once I've heard like uh, about uh, uh, in Sibir for the first time, it, is, it was such a big surprise for me that uh, in Spain, uh, government institutions are taking uh, the cybersecurity topics so seriously uh, and it's so well developed. So I came like from the side of uh, marketing and the online advertising, but uh, securing uh, marketing budgets for advertisers uh, and it was for me a surprise, so we were happy to join the program in 2000, uh, in CIBA program in 2021. So, and the program, uh, my recommendations, it's, uh, it's really one of the top programs in term, acceleration programs that I've met. Uh, so it's very knowledge, uh, deep, deep actual knowledge, up to date, so, and a lot of uh, direct contacts, uh, and mass media contacts, uh, so my recommendations. Thank you very much, uh, Dimitri. Well, we, we, we <coughs> begin uh, talking about the program now. Uh, I think that uh, we should talk about your solution in order that the public could understand uh, much better the startups and solutions, cybersecurity problems. So, Maria, let's begin with you. What about uh, Cartos? Cartos has a hundred, an army of hundreds of robots, okay, that are looking continuously and automatically way uh, in internet, deep web, and dark web, all the leaked information from the companies, okay, information that could miss a risk in cybersecurity, reputational, and competitive risk in these three areas. And uh, well, you've been working. I think that you a startup was created in. 2019, mm -hmm. so you have uh, you have grown uh, very fast, uh, I guess, because you're now <coughs> in international markets. So I think that you are doing great. And thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, we grow. We are growing a lot, and in two or three years only. And nowadays we are we have an open funding. Okay, so investors, hello. We are here, <laughs> and we need to grow day by day, and in an international way, it means uh, more money for more investing, marketing, to make a branding, and grow and grow day by day. Not only technology, not all is only technology. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's a business, and you have to yes. this keep out different This is what I, what I learned in the program. Yeah. Not only is technology, there are a lot all, of different all. parts in, inside a company. You need training, company. you need mentoring, and that helps you. Okay, great. And uh, Daniel, what about Hasbalit? <laughs> well, uh, I will start with, with the problem and then I will go to the solution. So uh, I'm, I'm in the blockchain industry, so it's a very early stage industry and there's a lot of fraud. We have uh, last year about 12 billions of dollars that were stolen. And every day there are about 1,500 bitcoins that are lost. And that's the view of the complexity of the technology and the responsibility of the users or the ones providing the, the services for the users. So Hash Wallet started being uh, only one device, uh, a device in a, in a credit card form factor with a, a display, a secure element. So the idea behind this is that you have a, a very secure device where you can store your, your keys, your wallets, and you can sign a transaction in a secure way. And then from there, we moved to a family of products. We saw the opportunity because uh, uh, there are different kind of users and there are different kind of companies. Uh, and the approach of centralizing all the keys in one place is not a very good idea. So that's why we came with, us, with other solutions to provide normal cards where you can store the keys and have a very similar uh, user experience of, from a normal credit card. So uh, any bank, vintage, exchange can issue those cards for their customers, decentralize the risk, secure their customers, and give them a better user experience. Great, great. And uh, Dimitri? Uh, uh, as for the fraud score, so we are, in, uh, we are a in independent uh, anti-fraud solution for online advertising. So the, in general, the problem is that uh, uh, 
every third click, uh, online advertising click uh, in the world is fraudulent. Uh, for example, according to our statistics uh, in European Union this year, we see uh, around 34% of fraudulent clicks. And that means that around one, uh, every third dollar from uh, marketing budgets of the direct advertisers is lost. Uh, and uh, it is expected that something like $150 billion uh, the industry will become by the end of 2025. And uh, it's easy to understand. The more money is coming into the industry, and it will be because we are moving into the online. Everything is moving to online. So the more, mar mar the more money is moving into online, uh, the more uh, intention for the fraudsters to steal this money. So there is a lot of work for the companies like FraudScore here to detect these uh, fraudulent activities. And uh, definitely here, like, I don't know, I think every, every third device here is um, infected with some malware apps. That is watching ads right now, clicking the ads, and you just don't know that. Uh, so that's what we fight with. Great, and just to close the, the round table, I would like you uh, in a couple <coughs> of words, a word, whatever you wish, um, uh, tell us uh, uh, something that defines your feelings about, and uh, Maria, I will ask you about being a female in the entrepreneur uh, in, in the field of cybersecurity, entrepreneurship in, in the field of cybersecurity. The word is work. <laughs> there is no ages, there is no gender, the word is work. That's it. That's the point. Doesn't matter the gender. The, is, the, the work doesn't is the same matter. for all of them. If you don't work, you, whatever you are, there is no, doesn't matter. Work. Work and work. That's it. That's the key. <laughs> Access key. Great. Great. And what about uh, you, Daniel? Uh, uh, perhaps because you are. You had a bachelor degree in business administration. You have a postgraduate in blockchain, big data, but you are working in the cybersecurity field. So, uh, which, uh, in a word, a couple of words, what are your feelings about uh, working in cybersecurity industry? Uh, I would say that it's a great opportunity for everyone. That's uh, the resume. It doesn't matter if you are from, from, from the technical side of, of uh, knowledge, experience, uh, you can uh, provide value in this sector. So it's a great opportunity. So we need uh, talent from different uh, yeah, for sure. areas. It's, it's not only a question of how good the technical solution is, it's also a question of how to provide value to the end user and how the, the users will use your solution. So. Great. So no, we need a lot of professionals, yeah. not only in the field, of uh, cybersecurity, to yeah. work on cybersecurity, right? Yeah. And uh, Dimitri, uh, well, I think that's the logical okay. question because okay. your point of view is different. And uh, what do you think about the Spanish entrepreneur ecosystem? Oh, <laughs> um, you know, um, to my mind, so traveling a lot, being in different, uh, working with uh, companies from um, other countries. Uh, uh, three to five years ago, I would say that uh, European um, Union and uh, in general and Spain in particular, uh, IT ecosystem, I, IT projects, IT uh, the solutions uh, was uh, was not so developed uh, in comparison to, for example, the United States. Uh, so we were seeing like, uh, and we still see some banks apps are awful. Uh, so and we're missing a lot of uh, solutions that like in USA they have. Uh, so that is what I say we have an opportunity, right? So that is why I see that uh, today uh, I see here a lot of corporates, a lot of uh, investors, a lot of government institutions like in CIBE. And in cooperation, uh, so investors see, see, see this opportunity, and in cooperation, uh, I see that we are doing very strong right steps. And uh, during the last two, three years, I, I see so many changes. You can see, I, I don't know, in Madrid, uh, like 
so many uh, electric ride sharing services, uh, food delivery services. Now banking is on the boom. So uh, this looks like everything is going in the right way. And uh, okay. <laughs> so we could conclude that Spain is really a land of, of opportunities. Uh, yes. Yeah, so this year showed yeah, you, you had a you had a gap, and that is why you get an opportunity. So I mean Spain. Uh, so that is why it's the uh, right place uh, for to run and launch these uh, services today uh, in cybersecurity field also, and not only in cybersecurity field. So it's the, so the right place to run business today and also because it's Spain. <laughs> that's great. So I think that is uh, just the right final of this round <coughs> table. Uh, your experience, your different point of view, and uh, Spain like a land of opportunities in cybersecurity and in CIBE with 191 million of euros to spend the next years until 2026 to accelerate 1,000 startups and to incubate <coughs> more than 3,000 ideas or projects in the cybersecurity field. So thank you very much to everyone, especially for you. <laughs> thank you very, thank much. You very much.